from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast. And now for your host and CISO, James Azar. Good, good morning, security gang. Let's fix this uh, view here for a second. It's uh, There we go. Much, much better. Good morning, security gang. Welcome, welcome to another episode of the Cyber Hub Podcast. Packed show for all of y'all today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we get started, though, like every show, join me for a coffee cup cheers i've got my double espresso in this mug here not clear today obviously but this is handmade u.s made mug uh that i got here in alpharetta georgia at a local store absolutely love it coffee cup cheers y'all support local business is <laughs> i'd say all right for all of you tuning in live comment below we'll uh try to get to as many comments during the show as we possibly can all right so cloudflare says they mitigated another record-breaking DDoS attack. According to Matthew Prince, the company's CEO, the attack peaked at 3.8 terabytes per second and 2.14 billion packets per second. The attack was aimed at an unidentified customer of an unnamed hosting provider that uses Cloudflare services, so one can only assume. To put the numbers into context, the previous record DDoS attack was in late 2021. Microsoft saw that peak at 3.47 terabits per second and a packet rate of 340 million PPSs. The uh, biggest attack previously seen by Cloudflare peaked at 2.6 terabits per second. In terms of just network protocol attacks, cloud provider OVH OVH Cloud in July of 2024 reported seeing a record-breaking attack peaking at 840 million PPSs. So this was the application layer DDoS attack. It was an HTTP two rapid reset that holds the record with the method being used to launch an attack that peaked back then at 398 million requests per second uh, according to google's measurements so we're starting to see ddos attacks really pick back up again and obviously you see this graph of packets here by cloudflare and and for the duration um by the way because that's uh, th that's significant that duration and that persistence and that sudden scaling uh, is is definitely something to monitor. Um, DDoS attacks are, are kind of what I like to call testing mechanisms, typically by nation state actors. So they're testing and, and, and they'll continue to test in order to see what could be mitigated and what's the mitigation plan and how long it takes to recover. Um, and it's kind of like a game plan battle type of deal. So there's that. Um, you ought to have DDoS protection at every layer of your business. So a lot of times you're putting it at your at your at your uh, maybe network level, but you want to have it at your application level as well if you haven't done that. We'll move to some vulnerabilities with Rackspace. Uh, suffer who uh, a, a cloud hosting provider Rackspace suffered a data breach that exposed limited customer monitoring data after threat actors exploited a zero day vulnerability in a third party tool used by the Science Logic SL1 platform. Science Logic confirmed to Bleeping Computer that they've developed a patch to address the risk and distribute it to all impacted customers while providing assistance where needed. The zero day remote code execution vulnerability within a non Science Logic third party utility uh, that is delivered with the SL1 package. Uh, according to Jessica Lindbergh, the vice president at Science Logic, once they've identified it, they quickly developed a patch to remediate the incident, made it available. Science Logic declined to name the third party utility to avoid providing hints to other attackers as it might be used on several other products. The hope is that once kind of everyone gets patched up, that they share this. The zero day remote code execution vulnerability was exploited, and the third party Science Logic application used by Rackspace was the one that was exploited for that specific data breach. Science Logic SL1, for those who don't know, is an IT operation platform for monitoring, analyzing, and automating an organization's infrastructure, including cloud networks and application. It provides real time visibility, event correlation, and automated workflows to help manage and optimize IT environments. Rackspace, which is a kind of private cloud computing company, uh, uses the SL1 to monitor its own IT infrastructure and services. Um, this was first reported by the register uh, when the Rackspace SL1 solution was hacked through to zero day with some customer information being stolen. At this time, uh, Rackspace uh, says that the 
information that was likely stolen includes customer monitoring data, including customer account names and numbers, customer usernames, Rackspace internally generated device IDs, device names and information, IP addresses, and AES-256 encrypted Rackspace internal device agent credentials. Uh, they've rotated those credentials as a precaution. Um, so there's that there. There's obviously a full statement here, which I'm not going to read to you. Um, so they say there's little impact to customers It's uh, and, and they're moving on. Security researchers are raising the alarm about an in-the-wild exploitation of a critical severity vulnerability in the popular email and collaboration platform called Zimbra. CVE 2024-45519er is a security defect that would allow attacker to execute commands on a vulnerable servers without any authentication. So this is a low complexity attack. Zimpra versions 9.00, patch 41, 10.0.9er, 10.1.1, and 8.8.15, patch 46, fix a security vulnerability in the post journal service, which may allow unauthenticated uh, users to execute commands. The company didn't share specific details on the bug. The vulnerability has yet to reach uh, this national vulnerability database project discovery last week released technical information on the flaw along with a proof of concept exploit which means it's already being taken advantage of so you want to make sure uh, you get this patched up if you are a customer sis on monday is warning that years old vulnerabilities in sap commerce gpack framework and dealing uh, dir 820 routers are being exploited in the wild the oldest of the flaws is CVE 2019-0344 with a CVSS score of 9.8. It's an unsafe deserialization issue in the virtual JDBC uh, extension of SAP Commerce Cloud that allows attackers to execute arbitrary code on a vulnerable system with the Hybris user rights. Hybris is a CRM tool destined for customer service, which is deeply integrated into the uh, SAP Cloud ecosystem. This affects Commerce Cloud version 6.4, 6 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 18.08, 18.11, and 1905. The vulnerability was disclosed in August of 2019 when SAP rolled out patches for it. Next in line is GPAC, that's CVE 2021-4043, a medium severity null pointer uh, uh, dereference bug in the GPAC, a highly popular open source multimedia framework. That supports a broad range of video, audio, encrypted media, and other types of content. The issue was resolved in GPAC version 1.1.0. And finally, the third security defect this is warning about is CVE 2023-25280 CVSS score of 9.8. And it's a critical severity OS command injection flaw in D-Link DIR 820 routers that allows remote unauthenticated attackers to obtain root privileges on vulnerable devices. So you want to make sure you get those patched up or out of sync. If you haven't subscribed to my Substack, please make sure to do so right now. JamesHazard.substack.com. Uh, a lot of in-depth uh, in depth look around cybersecurity, geopolitics, a whole bunch. Um, and next week, we'll be dropping our Trump versus Harris episode uh, exclusively on Substack and YouTube. So you'll want to go and check it out there as well. Um, so we'll see how they rank on cybersecurity. So there's that. So make sure to go check that out. We continue with the uh, United States top cyber defense struggling to maintain its flagship threat sharing initiative, that's CISA's, according to a new watchdog report, while plummeting participation, security concerns, and a lack of recruitment strategies undermining its ability to protect critical infrastructure. A September report from uh, DHS's Office of the Inspector General found that participation in CISA's automated indicator sharing program has plummeted to its lowest level since 2017. The report attributed to the decline, the decline to CISA's failure to maintain an outreach strategy and lack of engagement with key stakeholders, resulting in a 93% drop in cyber threat indicators shared through the system. The program established in 2015 by, uh, the, by the 2015 Cybersecurity Act facilitated real-time automated exchange of cyber threat indicators between the public and private sectors, allowing them to share actionable intelligence on vulnerabilities, threat tactics, and malicious activities. The program has struggled to keep up with essentially everything going on. CISA spearheaded several threat sharing initiatives beside AES, including the National Cyber Awareness System and the Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative. Too many programs doing too much typically will kill other programs that might have been doing well to begin with. So there's an idea there. 
Yesterday, we reported on the show that the ransomware summit at the White House is taking place, and it's just all joy and good, and we're going to fight ransomware, and we're going to beat ransomware, and then they all kind of admit, you know, if companies didn't pay for ransomware, maybe the numbers would go down. <sighs> for those listening, you can't see my face right now. Utter and absolute disappointment. Half of the ransomware attacks hit U.S. organizations during the first half of 2024. Uh, literally, I did a, a webinar with my friends over at Zscaler um, yesterday talking about ransomware uh, and their ransomware report. The numbers were staggering, right? Um, here they talk about the $22 million ransom demand that Change Healthcare made, but there was a $75 million ransom that was paid. And as long as we pay ransoms and as long as insurance companies pay ransom on behalf of companies, um, I don't see how you end this unless you become actionable rather than just statement wise so there's got to be action to deter ransomware operators and countries that harbor ransomware operators um and 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 i know that russia 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 i get it i get it it's it's, it's a trend okay but china china north korea north korea iran iran i can keep going eastern europe Parts of Southeast Asia, India, Pakistan. Can I keep going? Other places other than Russia. Other places other than Russia. There are. I know. It's hard to believe. The world, yes, yes, we all rotate around Russia in the world of cybersecurity. Not true. Russia is not the sun. China is. China is the sun. But, again, that's why the summits gather headlines, make you feel like they're doing something. When in all actuality, they're uh, uh, not recognizing the symptoms. You're going to the doctor and your back hurts, your legs hurt, your stomach hurts, and they tell you to take an aspirin. Why? Because uh, it could be something you ate. You, someone needs more diagnostics, please. Iran linked threat actors have become increasingly active this year. Pandala has landed on our radar twice this year, according to reports here by the Cyber Express. In a hack of Zerto in June in a max text campaign sent to Israeli citizens back in April, the pro-Palestinian group has recently stepped up its campaign in actions documented by Kevin Bauman in a blog post and a long-running thread on uh, Mastodon, whatever that is. Um, so Handala's most dramatic claim that they've discovered a backdoor in a widely used Vidisco security scanner that allows explosives used in a pager attack in Lebanon last month to go undetected. While well, remains unconfirmed, Bama said he has confirmed the breach of a Fidesco did occur. He's confirmed with sources that the hack of Fidesco is real. They have significant cybersecurity incident running, which includes data exfil. And they'll also claim that the breach the Israeli industrial batteries and contaminated IIB material were also used in the pager attack. But Bama said he hasn't seen evidence to that claim as of yet. As far as he's aware, there's nothing linking either Fidesco or IIB to the battery attacks over it's clear Handala gained access to Videsco's network. Handala has previously been linked to Iran and Bama confirmed that connection noting their prior web domains had early network traffic originating from Iranian IP addresses. Their talking points in the writing overlap with Iranian government talking points. That that's pretty much the entire um the the, the entire axis there. Um that's, you know, fafo find out you know, f around and find out is what happened to Hamas. Um, it's what's happening to Hezbollah. And uh, after the ballistic missile attacks on Israel yesterday, well, soon Iran will find out just, just how far if they haven't, right? So um, Nullah's post on Surak two days ago referenced the recent assassination of massive and leader, uh, a ma a world's number one terrorist, the leader of the largest terror organization in the globe, Hezbollah. Um, May he burn in hell, Hassan Nasrallah. So um, obviously, um, the Zurich Nuclear uh, Research Center maintains the highest level of information security protocols, according to the Prime Minister's office. The incident is known and under investigation. And so we'll see. And again, uh, that target is going to be something else. Uh, and 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 challenging days ahead. Challenging days ahead, as I'll say, especially in the in the cyber realm. I think we're about to see some. Some stuff that'll blow our minds. Law enforcement from the US, UK, France, Spain made a coordinated announcement Tuesday of further arrest, indictments, and sanctions and server takedowns targeting the Russian cyber criminal underground 
including additional strikes against LockBits ransomware as a service operation. The DOJ on Tuesday unsealed seven count criminal indictments against Russian uh, national Alexander Vitrovich Ryajavosh, aka Lizard King, who's believed to be in Russia. Authorities have accused a 31 year old of using BitPaymer ransomware against US victims since at least June of 2017. He's not getting extradited. Absolutely pointless. Evil Core further targeted by sanction. Right hand man to uh, uh, Ryashinov served uh, is Maxim uh, Yakubats, aka Aqua, who heads Evil Core, the Russian speaking uh, criminal hacking group whose turn into international law enforcement spotlight since 2019 has been greatly diminished by its capabilities. So all in all, um, some activities there. Lockbit disruption continues. Again, it's decentralized. You're going to distribute. They're just another affiliate's going to go set back up and continue under a different name. You really have to rethink the way you do this. And my hope is that law enforcement will do that one day. In Africa as well, a cybercrime operation in West Africa resulted in the arrest of eight in Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria, marking the success. And and, 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 and that's what the Cyber Express are. Success of Interpol's latest cybercrime. They took down eight guys. They gave it an operation name. They get to put out a story. And that's that. So they've arrested eight guys uh, who defrauded French citizens out of more than $1.4 million. Apparently, uh, Swiss citizens. Sorry, not French. Swiss. Swiss. Apparently, steal $1.4 million from the Swiss. You get raided. Steal billions from the U.S., you get sanctioned, maybe put on a re- Interpol red notice. You can't leave your country, but, you know, there's that. So Interpol, for their end, they're saying they're leveraged to increase reliance on technology in every aspect. Cyber criminals are employing a range of techniques to steal data and execute fraudulent activities. Welcome to the world, uh, Interpol. Great to have you here with us. Um, you've arrested eight in Cote d'Ivoire and Nigeria. I'm sure that ring goes way more than eight people, but nonetheless... You found some people who didn't cover their tracks. You get to celebrate it, give it an operation name, and you're proud of yourselves. Pat on the back. Cybercrime has not slowed or stopped since. That's it for our show this morning. We'll be we will be back Monday. Uh, tomorrow, tonight kicks off Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. And so I am taking a much needed break uh, today. Essentially, this is the only thing I'm doing today. Uh, tomorrow, Friday. Uh, there will be an article out on Sunday, uh, Saturday morning on our Substack, jamesaser.substack.com, and the show will be back on Monday at 9 a.m. And by the way, I'll be posting an old episode of CISO Talk. When the podcast wasn't called CyberHub Podcast, it was called the CyberHub Engage Podcast. Um, uh, something that made me rethink uh, a discussion around quantum computing from 2019 with a very, very brilliant mind, Chris Lindberg, uh, formerly of the CDC. So uh, you'll definitely uh, see that. That'll be dropping. Check out our YouTube and X for that full episode uh, tomorrow. Uh, until then, have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Shana Tova to anyone celebrating Rosh Hashanah. And stay cyber safe. We love feedback. So make sure to connect with us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform.